to go. That's making a good day. Let's get a tiger. Give it up for Debbie Gibson, everyone. We oh. do it our own way. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you. How beautiful. Thank you, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the show. I'm excited. I'm really... I'm excited. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Jace. How you doing, audience? How you doing? Good. I gotta tell you. Let me. Let's start off. Uh, you know, every day, every day, Aaron Schwaberini, who is our uh, audience coordinator, uh, she's also when you come to yeah, she's the best. She's also, I call her the Bette Midler of the Twin Cities. She's a fantastic singer. Anyway, Erin comes back with executive producer Jeff back in the little cubbyhole, and she gives me kind of a temperature of the audience. You know, oh, they're nervous. Uh, <laughs> one's uh, not having fun. You know what I mean? Uh, but today she comes back and she goes, oh, you got to see the top row. You got to see the top row. Because the top row, they look like they're heading to J.C. Penney for a matching family portrait. They're all wearing matching denim, and and the top row, and they're all wearing white pants after Labor Day. That's right. <laughs> they are rebels, girl. They are rebels. They don't care about your your fashion do's and don'ts. They're gonna do whatever they want. That's right. Well. Speaking, uh, speaking of after Labor Day, uh, you know, I come from Chicagoland. Hi, Chicago. I come from Chicagoland, the home of great, of many great things. But we had growing up wonderful local commercials, you know, uh, for car dealerships, uh, Moo and Oink, my favorite butcher shop in, in Chicagoland. And, and we have them here in Minneapolis, too. But I love, so my point is I love a good local commercial. And there's one that was uh, recorded Oh, I don't know, about six, seven years ago out of Missouri that I always think of this time of year. And it, on my radio show, we played all the time. And it's for, before we roll it, it's for East Hills uh, Mall, East Hills Shopping Center. And what they did was the, the advertising crew went around to all the stores uh, at this mall and pulled employees, just random people, to sing a little jingle. And it's my, I don't want to oversell it, but this gives me such joy. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the East Hill Shopping Center back to school commercial. Look at this. East Hill. And pants and boots and pants. New shoes. Get yourself an outfit. Denim. Boots and pants and boots and pants. Haircut. New shoes. <laughs> I love it. Boots and pants and but anyway, let's get the boots and pants started. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, she's wearing boots but not pants. It's Kendall, everybody. That's right. No pants. No pants. Have you ever seen that before? Do you think I've seen that before? I watched your face. Isn't that great? I'm like, who thought? Let's just go pull these random employees and tell them, tell us two things you sell and sing about it. Well, they became a viral sensation, and I'll tell you what, this is, we, we laugh about this too. Uh, the, the the radio show uh, on my talk 1071 we tried to get the boots and pants guy we called him Come for an interview no audience seriously I'm not kidding look we've had Academy Award winners on the show on the radio show we've had uh, Broadway stars we've had I'm not kidding. Our executive producer called the boots and pants guy and asked him to come on the radio show. He turned us down. He said no. 
I'm he not. Was too busy. Your show is too small. I'm not gonna. The boots and pants guy turned us, and that's when I thought I I'm in the wrong profession. You know what I mean? <laughs> Emma Thompson said yes. Boots and pants guy said no. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Wrong, Leo. Here we go. Oh, some good hot topics today. First up, anyone. <laughs> Oh, this is good. Anyone that's been to Las Vegas recently knows seeing a show is not cheap. It used to be nowadays, girl, please. But that may not be the case if you want to see one of the newest shows on the strip. It's expensive to be me. right no audience 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 save your energy don't bother clapping Beverly Hills housewife Erica Jane uh, right here singing it's expensive to be me but it's not very expensive if you want to see her Las Vegas residency tickets to her show which is called bet it all on blonde are selling for as low as seven bucks oh. in December $7. Leo, take a shot of this audience right here. These folks paid $20. That lady right there shaking her head, she paid $20 to be here. That's right. Anyway, that's the price on the resale uh, website StubHub, and the tickets uh, are near the stage for $7. I'm talking like right, like right up close. Another resale ticket site has the Erica Jane tickets for as low as $14, $22 around there. Normally, the tickets start at $69. So basically, we can't give them away. We got a we gotta clearance rack these things. And I say this not, I take no joy. I, I enjoy Erica on the Beverly Hills. Jane's show is playing, by the way, at Mandalay Bay's uh, House of Blues. Want to go after the baby? <laughs> yeah. For $7? Yeah. Would we could you, bring the baby. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Would you go to this? Jason, would I go to that? I don't know. Absolutely not. Unless you're paying and you give me a lot of vodka. Yeah. After post baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Post baby. Nobody write an email. Well, the Jason Show research team. <laughs> think <laughs> the audience is easily amused today. I love it. <laughs> There's my denim, ladies. Anyway, they decided, our research team decided to compare ticket prices between Erica Jane and Adele at oh Caesars God. Palace. <laughs> now, the cheapest Adele tickets on StubHub are $594, okay, for each Friday, uh, set for each fri for each for Friday, September 22nd. On the same night, you can see Erica Jane, 15 bucks. There we go. Bargain. Discount show. That's right. Uh huh. I still want to see Adele, and I now I want to see Erica. I want to go now. Just I, I might go in October sometime. I want to. No, you will not. Oh, I are you after doing this story? I absolutely would go. Oh, absolutely. I do enjoy her. Uh, I'm a fan of her on Housewives. You could buy out the whole place. <laughs> Hell, I'll take the denim women. Yeah. I'll take the. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, think of it. A flight. I mean, think about this. No, I'm not joking. If you get a good flight, uh huh. Flight plus show ticket is still cheaper than Adele. Yeah. Just the show ticket for Adele. Uh -huh. I could end hotel. Yeah. I get free rooms at Caesars. Let's you know what go. I mean? Anyway, yeah. Just because I gamble a lot. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, my husband does. Next up, it's been rumored for days, but now, oh, it's official. Joe Jonas has filed for divorce from his actress wife, Sophie Turner. The singer, yeah, I know, I know. The singer and the Game of Thrones star have been married for about four years. Joe is seeking joint custody of their two young daughters. They released a joint statement about an hour ago. The typical 
please respect our privacy, we still love each other, blah, blah, blah. Well, we don't really talk a lot about Hollywood divorces around here because it depresses me. But uh, I mentioned that because Joe and his Jonas Brothers uh, performed at the Minnesota State Fair last weekend. And the reviews, we didn't get to this yesterday, they weren't great. The guys are on their five albums one night tour with shows that typically last three hours. But their State Fair show Friday night was just over an hour and a half. Is that true, Addy? Just over an hour and a half? Okay. Uh, and several reviews say it felt rushed. Basically, the guys performed their hit songs in quick melodies to fit everything in. So they would do like seven words of one song and then go to the next one. Yeah. Was it good, though, Addy? No. Oh, okay. Ooh, oh, ooh, ooh, oh. Ooh. Ooh. Social media director. Social media director, Addy, just went like this. Uh, uh. I wanted to go, and I would be really mad. There's new seating uh, on the sides of yes. the grandstand mm -hmm. for th this year, and those seats were going for like a buck fifty. Right. I would have been real mad had I paid. Well, we had a group of four or five. Seven dollars. If I would not, not, not that, yeah. I'm like, that, not that buck fifty. If I had paid six hundred, seven hundred dollars yeah. for all of us to go, oh, I would have been livid. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad I didn't. They, after you'd already bought the ticket, so this was a couple days maybe before the show, they put out a statement saying, listen, we're coming back in, I think, November and doing our full show. This is not going to be our full show because the State Fair only allows you to do an hour and a half set. Okay, well, if they're coming back in November, since I already paid a little bit for the state fair tickets do we get a discount on the november tickets i uh, yeah I, I feel like they a little too late a little, yeah I mean? no. absolutely mm -hmm. hey speaking of the fair a little bit later i teased this yesterday uh the brits working the dairy goodness building is coming up on the show that and more when we come back back after this <laughs> Oh, I'm telling you, I, it's so good to be Mac. We had great audiences at the fair, but my goodness, these folks today are fantastic. <laughs> Those, the audience here? Yeah. Good. Well, welcome back, everyone. Late Night TV uh, is re returning, kinda. Andy Cohen is back in the clubhouse of Watch What Happens Live after his summer break. And OC housewife Taylor Armstrong was one of his guests. She was on Beverly Hills, speaking of Beverly Hills. Uh, she was asked about her friend, Beverly Hills housewife, Kyle Richards. That is our Late Night Rewind. Sam G wants to know your reaction to the rumors that Kyle and Mauricio were separating and have you been in touch with Kyle uh, since? You know how much I love Kyle and I want Kyle to be happy and I love them both so much and I I know that they're always going to love each other and I just I want I want everyone to be happy. I'm I'm so neutral on that whole issue. Mm. Oh, you caught me re I was readjusting my seat. I was so bored during that. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's just be neutral. Just, yeah. just say how you feel. I just uh, try I'm so to happy for them both if they're happy. Yeah, I want everyone to be happy. Yeah. Right? Thanks, Taylor. It's mm -hmm. really influential. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. and inspirational. So but no, I, they are friends. I want. I, I actually think the Kyle and Maurizio divorce isn't as dramatic as ever. I guess we'll see on Housewives this year. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's drama. I think it's just two people that have been together for a very long time yep. and have just kind of grown apart. Mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. And that show, any of those, we've said it a thousand times, whether it's friendships or marriages, Housewives wrecks relationships. Mm -hmm. It is not easy no. for any, you, there are so many divorces from that franchise it's it's mm -hmm. ridiculous more just for you now with pro football returning this weekend that's right <laughs> i i am so excited i can't wait for football season look at it well uh, you know what else is coming back? ESPN's big hit Manning cast. Brothers Peyton and Eli watch Monday night, because I need a, oh, front row really likes this. Yeah, I like, e I like Eli. So what they do is they watch Monday night football and they comment throughout the game. So to promote the new season, the guys decided to hold auditions for a possible third co-host. Watch this. I'm confident, funny, but not too funny. Peyton's the only one, Eli's the younger one. Parents, Olivia. Right. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I play quarterback. Ooh, quarterback. We like that. You like that? Yeah, we like that. You like that? I just said that we liked it. You like that? I mean, what is this guy's deal? No, but did you did you like it? 
I'm just here because you guys have the most punchable face in the history of punching faces. You guys don't like my lines over there? Wow, Reese Witherspoon. I mean, we're honored you'd even consider auditioning for the Manning cast. Manning what? Oh, no, I was calling to bundle my home and auto. Aren't you the insurance guy? Guess it's just the two of us again this season. Unless there's someone on that list who is just perfect for the job. Nope. Not on this list. Mm-mm. You've been waiting here a long time, too? Have you seen the show? <laughs> Executive producer Jeff said the whole seven minutes is worth a watch. The video features everyone from, as you saw, Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins, Therese, Keenan Thompson, Tom Brady, and more. So, <laughs> did you see that headline yesterday? People think that Tom had a little bit of work done. He, he had a little Botox done. Did he? I don't know. I don't know, but his his face does look a little different. I just and look, I ain't hating. You take Leo, take five. This looks like 94 westbound right here. I'm getting this line. By the end of this month, this line's gonna be gone. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna just put a whole bunch of whale fat right here. I'm I'm getting rid of this. But so I'm not hating. I don't care. I'm really open. I'll get Botox and the whole top row and I are going right after the show. They don't need it, but I'm taking them. Free Botox for everybody. They're they happy. don't need it, though. That's right. They're excited. No, but... If he did, so, you know, there, he's rumored to be da dating that old supermodel that oh. used to date... Old oh. supermodel? No, 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 no. She doesn't... She's not, like, a supermodel anymore, I don't think. So, so let's use the word former. Whatever. <laughs> she's, like, my age. She's, like, 33 or something. Yeah. Anyway, she's also dating Bradley Cooper. She's dating oh. both of them. Are she's dating say? both of them at the same time? Yes. See? She's... That's not fair. Hey, girl. You, you, look, what's her name? I think it's Irina Schenk. I've Whatever. never actually like heard it. I've Former read supermodel, it. you only get one. Really? I'm just saying. That's not fair. You get to date two really good looking guys? Uh-huh. She's a player. Yeah, next to the dish. Uh, we've heard of divorces. <laughs> we've heard of divorces caused by cheating, money, gambling, whatever. You're gonna love this. But author Stephen King just admitted. <laughs> Here's Stephen looking uh, disapprovingly at me. Anyway, here, Stephen King just admitted that his wife almost left him because he couldn't stop listening to a certain song while he wrote. He said the song nearly destroyed, this is no joke, his marriage. Which song on repeat? This song. A little bit of Monica in my life. A little bit of Erica by my side. A little bit of Rita's all I need. A little bit of Tina's what I see. A little bit of Sandra in the sun. A little bit of Mary all night long. A little bit of Jessica, here I am. A little bit of you makes me your man. Yeah. That's Mambo number five. Mr. Lou Vega is one hit wonder. Steven said he became obsessed with the song, listening to the dance mix, as well as the instrumental version. <laughs> he said it actually helped him write. And this song played nonstop while he wrote his 2011 novel, 112263. Eventually, he stopped the song and saved his marriage. Yeah. I, I, that's really nice of him. Can you can you imagine though if that's all Jordan played in the basement just no. over and over? No, I'd kick him out. I'd unplug the speaker and I'd drag him upstairs and I would kick him out of the house like yeah. that. Just like that. Does he have is there any and I know you're getting ready you need you need him on your side right now mm -hmm. but I'm just going to cause trouble. I'm going to cause that. trouble. Mm -hmm. What is the one little annoying tick that he has that makes you literally want to kick him in the backyard? I thought you were going to say in somewhere else in yeah. his body. Um, I would say, oh, he turns TVs on all the time and then leaves the room. And I feel like this is a man thing in general, so someone mansplain this to me. He'll come down the stairs in the morning, I'm reading my books, but my coffee, and all of a sudden he's like, oh, and he'll turn on college game day. And I'm like, why do you even care about this? Because he doesn't even watch college football. And then he'll just leave. And then he'll go outside, and he'll turn on the TV on the porch. And then he'll go in the basement, and he'll turn that TV on. And he literally will just leave. He why leaves, do you he, men do this? He leaves TVs on in every room? Yeah, it's like a little sociopath. I, I don't do that. I do leave lights on. 
I do leave lights on. I, I like Why? bright uh, because I like things bright. I don't. Uh, yeah. Is he saying he just likes to drown me out? Is that what you're saying? He just uh, likes to drown my voice out? <laughs> Jason. To be clear, I didn't say that. No, I'm not saying that. I would never say that about you. But, 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 but. But Collins, uh, uh, mm -hmm. let's move on. Mac up next. You brought it up. Yeah. I know, let me make fun of myself. I know what Colin would say. What? Uh, just, you know that I'm moody after work or like after the fair. Oh God, I mean, I was just you. John I'm, calls me picky. He's like, you can be a little picky and persnickety sometimes. Yeah, oh, I'm definitely persnickety uh -huh. Af uh, after a day. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Up now, mine with Colin, never drive with Colin. It's the seventh, eighth, and ninth ring of hell. It really is. Because no matter what you do, he wants you to go a different way. Oh. You know, oh, and he'll tell you, well, he should have turned left. Okay, I'm sorry. Up next, uh, from the king of scary books to a new scary movie. Oh, if you don't like scary movies, just step away for just a second. But if you do like scary movies, this is real good. The brand new official trailer just dropped for the upcoming Exorcist movie. Uh, from the uh, Yeah, this is the follow-up to the classic Exorcist. It's called Believer. This comes 50 years after the first movie terrorized the world. Here's a little bit of the trailer. Something's going on with my daughter. It's happening to my daughter, too. The devil has one wish. Wherever those girls went, they brought something back with them. <laughs> to make us lose faith. I believe you can help get our daughters back. To kill it in us. And the devil never gives up. She knows who I am. Where's the other girl? I am so excited for this. Ellen Burstyn returns to the franchise as uh, as Miss McNeil, helping families who have daughters that are possessed in this movie. It opens uh, on October 6th. Didn't they move it though, Jeff? Nope. They, it's now October 6th. They moved it away from Taylor Swift. Yeah, it was a week before. I still think The Exorcist is the scariest movie ever. I think it holds up. This is by the same guy, the director that rebooted Halloween. Mm -hmm. He's doing it here, but he's taking a much different tone. He's repeating kind of the tone of the original Exorcist. It was more psychological. It's not, you know, it's not a slasher movie. Right. If you think of the first Exorcist, it's really a psycholo it's really about a mother losing trying to save her daughter. Mm -hmm. It's really not a horror movie. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, it is it scary, is. but it's terrifying. That whole trailer though, it looks so good. Uh-huh. I'm going to have to wear my depends if I go to that movie. Yeah. <laughs> it don't you can't go. I mean, you'll be you'll you'll be freshly birthed. I know. I'm going to have to wear yeah. my depends if I go to that movie. By the way, remember we're really hoping that Kendall uh, has her baby next week on our season premiere. We're really so yeah, go yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your love and kindness. Yeah. If you, again, we would really like you to schedule it on the 13th because we have an open block. So if you could just make sure you have the baby that day. So I'll talk to my people. Thank you. Uh, time to meet our first JVIP of the week. Three days a week, we feature an at-home fan of our show. Today, it's Jane Westerlin from Maynard, Minnesota. Jane says she watched a lot of different talk shows, but she likes that we keep it real and we have a, like, a ton of fun. She says uh, this show is the only talk show she can get her boyfriend to watch with her. Oh, I love that. That. Thanks, Jane. Uh, Jane gets Jason Show mug. She's also entered win the monthly grand prize. That includes being a VIP guest in our audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture World, and a $150 gift card to the Institute of Advanced Aesthetics. Uh, go get some more coffee. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. Coming up in just a little bit, one man is on a mission to help you eat food from all over the world without a plane ticket. Then, what are we watching? Why you should be watching the new Star Wars series. That more when The Jason Show continues. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, don't forget Monday, September 11th is our ninth season premiere. Come be in the audience. Go to eventbrite.com and search for The Jason Show. Uh, that is the day we're going to be launching. Our, our show is expanding again. We're going to be in Orlando now and uh, some other cities. And we'll tell you about those. Yeah. 
We have some other cities to tell you about. We'll have that announcement tomorrow. But right now, whether you're in the Twin Cities or another new uh, uh, town of ours, Chicago or Seattle, many of us always are we're looking for ways to do new things, to eat and experience. Well, one guy in Chicago caught our, caught our attention because he's helping locals and visitors do just that. Bored in Chicago on TikTok and Instagram is on a mission to eat the food of every country without leaving the city. Look. I'm eating the food of every country of the world all near Chicago. Today's country is Ghana and I headed to Palace Gate in Uptown. And I'm telling you, you've got to try this place out. Here, we started with the Kaliwele, fried plantains with peanuts that are sweet, yet also have a decent amount of spiciness to them. Then I opted for a ground nut or peanut soup with goat, which also came with fufu, a boiled, pounded, and rounded sticky dough made of starches like cassava, plantain, and cocoa yam. Fufu. I love that. Fufu. That's Cam Brinson from Sh Board in Chicago on a recent trip to a restaurant serving food, as he told you, from Ghana. His page has more than 8 million likes and hundreds of thousands of followers. Cam joins us live via Zoom from Chicago. Give it up for Cam, everybody. Hi, buddy. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, Cam? I'm good. Great. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for being here. I always I say this. I like an origin story. I like to know where ideas come from. Where did this idea come from? Yeah, I mean, I so I saw some videos on YouTube or something um, last year where some guy who was basically trying to cook every national dish. And I was like, that is awesome. I like cooking. I like watching this sort of stuff. So like, that is awesome. And I personally have been making videos about Chicago for the last four years or so. So I kind of took that idea, twisted it a little bit, made it more Chicago focused and said, hey, why not try to start to go to restaurants and try to find maybe every national dish or at least a food from every country all within Chicago. Because Cam, you know why I why we like this here on the on the show is I think everyone can relate whether you're in Chicago or Seattle or here in the Twin Cities or Wisconsin. We sometimes take for granted what we have in our own backyard. You know, we, we the, the, the line being a tourist in your town but we, we sometimes don't do it. We get caught up in our own lives, don't you think? And it's, it's, it's not easy, always easy to do. Yeah, exactly. And similarly, right, I feel like a lot of people just only go to the same spots when they're going out to dinner, right? It's like a um, Friday night or something like that. They say, oh, like, I don't really know. Like, I, I plan, I don't really know where I want to go eat. Let's just go to one of these three places that I know I like. And actually, that person has been one of the things that's been really helpful for me and for my wife is now it's every Wednesday, including tonight, um, we already have a plan for like today we're getting food from Iceland, um, which makes things a lot more uh, simple in terms of planning, but also more exciting in terms of actually exploring the city and exploring new things. And I know if you're watching from smaller towns, you're thinking, oh, it's easy to do in Chicago, but uh, but not in my town. Not necessarily. I mean, nowadays, the, the cuisine around towns, medium, small, and big, are, are so diverse. Let me go through some of the food that you've tried recently. Georgia, El Salvador. Do you have some recent, you just mentioned Iceland. Do you have some recent favorites? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd say Georgia was surprisingly very different than anything I've expected, um, mainly because they have, they have something called kachapuri, which might pop up throughout this video, um, but it's essentially this bread that has a stringy, like mozzarella-like cheese, a bunch of butter, and then an egg on top, and you eat it kind of simple, like I don't want to kind of ruin, ruin how you eat it, but it's kind of similar to a pizza, right? You cut off slices and get some incredible, cheesy, rich bread. Um, and I think it's probably the best cheese bread I've ever had. I was gonna Not say, you, I mean, you hit. You don't need to go any. You don't need to go. Whoa, oh my God! Look at that. It doesn't look awesome. It's just, oh it's my! Go ahead, Cam. Oh, I was just gonna say it's, it's incredible. It's it's just like I feel like that is one of those things I want to start bringing to parties. It doesn't actually look that difficult to make, and it's so good. What is this dumpling we're looking at, Cam? What is this? Uh, so it's a soup dumpling. So it had had a bit of beef in it, and then it was filled with soup. So there's a there's a similar dumpling in China called Xiao Wu Bao. This is that, which is on a much bigger scale, as you can tell. Those things are basically the size of my fist. Have you been surprised? You know, again, I said it right off the top. Millions of likes, hundreds of thousands of followers. It's you know, it's hard. There's no secret formula why people start going viral or why people start to trend. Were you surprised at the reaction to this? Uh, I'd say yes and no. So I've, I've been doing this for a while, not necessarily just food, but other content around Chicago. And it's gone in waves, right? And some videos blow up, some videos don't do necessarily as well. 
Um, but when I had this idea, I just thought, hey, it's pretty engaging, pretty interesting, and hopefully very differentiated, very unique compared to what everybody else is doing. So I thought maybe it would resonate, but you never really know until you try. So I started right from the top of the list at Afghanistan, found a restaurant that served food from Afghanistan, made that video, posted it, not really knowing what was going to happen, not really officially committing to the idea of doing 197 different countries with it. But uh, as you said, right, just it took off. The reception was way more positive than expected. And my big hope is that now a lot of people from the area are also doing the exact same thing and willing to get out of their comfort zones a little bit more, try some new cuisines from different countries they haven't actually even heard of before. Yeah, broaden your horizons, as I said, in Steel Magnolias. You were, we're just looking at video, too. You don't just do restaurants, as I mentioned a little bit ago, uh, activities, you know, being a tourist in your own town. You also look for, for, for events and stuff that people may not uh, know about. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then that's, that's frankly where all of this, like the, the channel and, and why I started doing this, uh, that's where it all started. It was the idea that I was in Chicago, which is a massive city, an awesome city, but I couldn't really find actual cool things to go to. And I knew that wasn't really a problem with the city. It was a problem with me and a problem oh. with uh, identifying. So that's why I started it out, was to go find those places and then start to share them out to other people as well. I love it. Cam, thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. For all of Cam's recommendations, check out Board in Chicago on TikTok or Instagram. You can also visit BoardInChicago.com. I think this is just such a good idea. I hope other people run with this and do it in your town. We're going to take a break. The Brits invade the State Fair Dairy Bar. That and more when we come back. Back in a moment. It is uh, one of the questions I get all of the time <clears throat> when people know what I do. Uh, hey, Jace. Hey, Kendall. What are some good shows to watch? Because uh, part of my job at night is watching kind of everything. Uh, I've got two for you today. Uh, first, I'm going to review the new Star Wars series. I mentioned it once, but now that we're about four into it, I wanted to tell you if, if it's worth your time. Ahsoka. Uh, now, I talked, like I said, a few weeks ago, but now this week's episode is number four. I have very strong opinions, but let's look at a clip and we'll talk about it on the other side. Yes. <laughs> yes. Some fans online, even, you know, even the bitter little man baby unsatisfied Star Wars fans. Uh, I'm one of them, but wow, we're hard to please. Some fans online are calling this episode, episode four, one of the best Star Wars episodes ever on any show. From Mandalorian to Andor, one of the best. And now, okay, now before we say this, before we roll, Spoiler alert, we knew he was coming back, but spoiler alert, don't yell at me, I've warned you, ready? It featured the return of Hayden Christensen to the role of Anakin Skywalker, who, if you're not a Star Wars nerd like me, he's the future Darth Vader. Anakin turns into Darth Vader, and Ahsoka uh, is kind of his Padawan. Uh, she trained under Anakin Skywalker. Um, this, I'm not... I'm really not overselling this or being Jason and being overly dramatic to make you laugh. Mm -hmm. This, from tip to tail, was so big and epic and loud and fun and lightsabers galore. It's everything you kind of want, want, you've wanted in a Star Wars show. This delivered not a bad thing about this episode. And that's why um, the folks at Star Wars... They didn't even know I was gonna review it this good. Um, and now, so keep sending me crap. Anyway, no, so they sent me this little Ahsoka box. So uh -huh. that's why I will now proudly wear this. There we go. There we go. That is a look, honey. That's a look, isn't it? That's a look. There we go. 
Okay, Disney, now let me into Club 33. Thank you. And then we got a little. Is there any candy in there? No, no. Oh my what? God. That's a no. chocolate covered pretzel. Don't tell me no. I already We're saw doing it. a show. You can eat after the show. Anyway, we got a little action figure. Fine. Here's some Ahsoka pretzels. There we go. Thank you. I'm very excited. Thank you, Star Wars. <laughs> it's there, right, right there. There she is. I'm not kidding, though. It's really, 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 really good. Go watch it. And you, you can catch up quickly. You, you don't have to be steeped in all this. The next show I'm watching is on, uh, well, Ahsoka, by the way, is on Disney+. Plus. Uh, so go watch that right now. Uh, should I save the others for later, Jeff? For later. Let's save it for later. Oh. Later in the week, I have another recommendation that you are going to love, and you don't have to wear that hat to watch it. Uh, <laughs> we're going to take a break. The Brits invade the fair when we return. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, yesterday I told you about the adventures of my British friends, Joe and Beth, uh, following their appearance on our final State Fair show on Friday. Again, I was reading the comments over the weekend. Thank you for being so kind to them, and we're really glad that you, you, you got them. That, that joy is real, and I'm glad you received it. Well, we got a chance after the Jason show aired, uh, I thought it would be fun uh, to put them to work. We got a chance to visit the dairy building, the dairy goodness building, to make them work at the ice cream bar. And, well, look at this. You guys are here, are here to go back and learn how to serve some malts at the dairy goodness yes. bar. How excited are you? So excited. Yes. 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 It's going to be a little bit of baptism by fire because it is wild. It's crazy. Okay. But first things first, we got to suit up. Here. Um, oh, you little cow ears. Let's go back, we're gonna wash in, and then we're gonna introduce you to Sophie, who will teach you and really kind of train you to help, um, you know, make some malts, make some sundaes, and serve our customers. Yes. Are you ready? I'm, I'm ready. So ready. Right, let's go, let's go. First impression of your new employees? Um, I think they're excited, so I think that's fantastic, and if they're excited, uh, that's what we want. Disappointed if some British person made your Sunday. Um, that'd be very bland. And we're going to train you in as makers because, again, we want to make a good product that we can send out the door. I want mine American made, right? I don't want them making my ice cream. Oh. Like so, I can Disney World. Lots of hand washing. Lots of hand washing. Sing yourself a little song. Scrub it up. Happy oh. birthday twice. Exactly. That works. That works. Jason, do you remember what song you sang while you did this? It was I'm Every Woman. Or I want to dance with somebody. That's oh, yeah, that's it. It. Yeah. So you got to sing, I want to dance with somebody. I want to dance with somebody. I want to feel the heat with somebody. Yeah, I want to dance with somebody. I want to feel the heat with somebody. Yeah. I'm ready to serve these lovely Minnesotans some delicious ice cream. Just so you know, Jason actually got, got demoted to just passing out yogurts and cheese sticks. So, uh, I'm hoping you can do better. Sorry. Sorry, Liz. Anybody want yogurt? Anybody want yogurt? Let's do a sundae, and then let's do a flavor the hair sundae. Sundae. How do we build that? Okay. Yeah. So you're going to pump the dark chocolate all around the edge, like I showed you. Come on back. You're doing great. Thank you. <laughs> Your support is really helping. And then you're going to want to build that on top in the corner. They can help us. We're we're their friends, but how is she going? How are they going to do with the real public? I'm making one for a customer. <laughs> like a real customer. A real customer. I'm ready. Get it nice and full, and then you're going to stop it right about here. Such a tiny snowman. <laughs> All right, and so we'll put him up here. I made a tiny snowman. <laughs> is that what they call it in England? Tiny snowman. No. It's what we call it on top. You look like a tiny snowman. A tiny snowman. <laughs> so this is chocolate. So you're going to want to do about four swirls around, trying to keep it about the
the same, even all around. Oh, oh, oh! Wow! <laughs> oh, it's beautiful! Is it the leaning tower of all screen? Is that it? That should be it. Sorry! <laughs> That's not the things that you need. <laughs> That was made by a British person. How is that? It's good. <laughs> You're being very nice. <laughs> okay, so they did pretty well, very well, on this aspect of the dairy industry. But this is the end of the process. How about the beginning of the process with an actual cow? That's right. Thanks to the good folks in the Dairy Goodness Building. Uh, yeah, tomorrow you will see them visit the Moo Booth where they milk some actual cows. I will tell you this in advance. I purposely left off the fact that they were going to be milking cows in front of an audience. Um, they did not know that the public would be right there. And our, our concept for this was, Joe and Beth, if you missed the first episode, they work at the busiest bar at Epcot Center. They, they, they wait on thousands of people every single day. So if they could do that, we wondered if they could handle hundreds of Minnesota fairgoers. And they did very well in their half-hour shift. Thank you to Joe and Beth. That's right. It was great, though. That woman, the woman with the little crooked ice cream cone, she didn't care. She ate that in like 15 seconds. She did not mind whatsoever. Again, thanks to the Dairy Goodness Building. Uh, we really appreciate it. It is my favorite place. If you ever visit the State Fair, the Caramel Sunday is the best caramel, the best ice cream I've ever had in my life. It really, really is. And those dairy kids, they work their butt off every single year. So thank you. And again, tomorrow, part two, the cows. Uh, we're going to take a break, though. We'll be back right after this to wrap things up. Back in a moment, everybody. Can you tell the people what you just said to me? That, that your sister oh, thinks... My sister thinks I'm having the baby today because she had a dream that I was having the baby today, and I told her no because I have my fantasy football draft, so it's not <laughs> happening. Yeah, so that baby cannot arrive today. No, I have things to do. Again, Uncle Jason would like you to arrive Wednesday, September 13th. Thank you. It's time for the world's shortest segment. Talk about dream jobs. Listen to this. A house rental company is looking, maybe for you, for someone who will watch the new season of the Great British Bake Off and then eat desserts. Uh, those are the only requirements. The company is called Big House Experience, and they want someone who will bake and try various desserts from the show. They're going to get paid $600. Anyone interested can apply on the Big House Experience website by September 25th. That could be like a little... We should do that. Like a maternity leave little fun side gig yeah. for you. Can you bring a baby? Yeah, you can bring a baby. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> We're all going for Botox after this, everybody. That's right. They don't need it, only me. Uh, it's time for the surprise goodbye. We don't know what's in this segment until right now, right, Kendall? Nope. That's right. Today, <laughs> today, what dogs do when you're not home. The owners of these dogs in Arizona, yeah, set up a camera to see what the dogs do when they're at work. Well, this is what they do. They got more than they bargained for. The dogs, my mom is loving this right now. The dogs were caught jumping on furniture, swinging from the ceiling, and basically just causing chaos. Oh, my mom is happy right now. No word if they plan, no word if they plan to keep the dogs in a kennel from now on. No, oh my goodness. But why, why are they doing what? that? That, this is probably one of my favorite Surprise endings ever. Come on, you can do it. Yes! They're hugging. <laughs> this is fantastic. Oh my god. Oh, I love it. Little obstacle course. Okay, uh, repeat after me. What, Jason? I, I will, will have, 
have the baby. The baby. Next Wednesday. Eventually. There we go. Tomorrow, <laughs> Stephanie Hansen is celebrating tomato season. She's sharing her tips on how to make the tomatoes last. That and more tomorrow. But right now, this can do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Bye, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Woo!